y'all back again for plant sessions this is our continued sessions of the ugly duckling to beautiful swan theme uh, basically if you have some dying plants at home how you can try to salvage them uh, that is the theme that we're talking about it is the heat of the summer undoubtedly you are experiencing some troublesome plants i know we are at tula uh, so i thought it was a great idea to talk about um you know why plants you know what they're looking like why that's happening and what you can do to try to salvage a piece or the whole plant or um none of the plant which is happens sometimes as well um so we've talked about previous to this we talked about um, cutting back entirely ferns and making little mini greenhouses to try to bring them back. We've talked about overwatered plants whose um, root balls have completely rotted out and how to take um, stem cuttings to try to save the plants um, so you can give it life again. Um, and today we're going to talk about um, both things. A plant that has been dried out um, and neglected um, and it's been overwatered and it's not getting enough sun. So what does a plant look like when all those three things are happening? It's like the trifecta. It looks like this and it looks like this. Yay. So this is an ivy. As you can see, some leaves are dry. Some leaves are still soft. Some leaves are dried and crunchy. Can you hear that? Some leaves are not crunchy at all, but they're wilted and soft. And um, there's no perkiness in this plant. It seems like a lost cause. But we want this plant to look like, where did it go? Oh, it's here. We want this plant to look like this. Look at how beautiful that is. This is what this plant should look like. This is what this looks like. <laughs> so, Unfortunately, it's gonna be really hard for non-greenhouse environments to bring these plants back. This guy was left underwatered for too long. There's a lot more crunchiness there and a lot more dried leaves. Um, the first thing that I would recommend doing for a plant that is in this stage is start cutting back the vines to see if there is indeed any life or if the vines, or if it's the leaves that have dried up and not totally the vines. So there's life. So the way you can do that is you cut into the vine and you see in the center, it's gonna be hard because this is just on my phone, but, um, uh, well, the inside of this vine is green. It's not dried, it's not brown, it's green. That means there's life. Great sign, but, it's gonna be really hard for all these leaves to come back. And even if we decided that, okay, this vine still has life and we wanna prune all these leaves back because these dried leaves are never gonna come back, now we've got just one bare vine and it's kind of ugly and it's not gonna really grow leaves back very quickly. So what I would recommend is just cutting it back entirely. Um, Let's see. Yeah, there's all just, this guy's just had bad luck. There's a bunch of life in here. It happens. It happens. It happens. So, um, here's one vine that doesn't look terrible. No, this looks, this looks pretty bad too. Also, I would always recommend looking very closely at your plants if like you know the water is right the, the light is right um the airflow is right but it still just really looks unhappy it actually could have a pest infestation it could have spider mites which ivy are prone to getting which is what i was just looking for which i don't see um but spider mites are really small and they look like teeny tiny tiny little like specks on the bottom of the leaves and then they can make these tiny little webbings in between the veins on the backside usually of the leaf or in the center uh, main vein of the leaf and um, so always 
always if your plants aren't looking good and they're turning yellow and you're not really sure always check them also for pests this guy looks okay so i'm going to try a few things because that first vine that we cut up uh, has life um, we're going to try to propagate these uh, stem cuttings and ivy is a vine so it definitely it has aerial roots and that means that the aerial roots grow from the plant node um, node is like a knuckle on a plant and so if we are to get one or two of these nodes into water we could get new roots and this could be the start of a whole new ivy plant da, 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 da. you never know uh, just like we did in our other video and in our propagation video we show how to uh, propagate with stem cuttings and so we're going to try it with the ivy i'm just going to stick these right into water and see what happens for the rest of this plant um what i'm going to do is i'm going to do hard prune because some of it looks okay um and because like here's a sign that i know that this plant has been overwatered uh because some of the leaves on the at the base of the plant are brown see this this is starting to see some brown coloring in the center that is a sign that uh, your roots are suffocating um, that they're not getting enough oxygen so the cells are dying um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna prune off all of that I'm gonna prune off everything that looks unhealthy to me and I'm gonna find a really sunny spot for this guy um, and I'm gonna monitor it because I don't think it's a I don't think it's totally a lost cause um, and you, you just never know um, so you might as well just try so we're gonna try with the stems and we're gonna prune away and I'm not gonna do all this cause it's gonna take me a minute um, on video but I'm gonna prune away all of the bad looking leaves, all of the bad looking vines. I'm gonna find a spot that has a few hours of direct sun, nice heat and airflow is number one important for ivy. That's how they get spider mites, lack of airflow and lack of humidity. So I'm also going to make sure that there's a humidifier around where I put this ivy, sun, humidity, airflow, and I'm gonna actually let it dry out a bit. So I'm going to risk it but i'm going to let it suffer a little bit on the dry side and um, because i often find and this could just be you know my own made up thing that uh any plants that are usually struggling if i get them into a really good growth environment that means sun heat and airflow and i just let them dry out a little bit kind of like fight for it fight for the moisture again, push out new roots, and really look for new nutrients and, and moisture, they can usually make their way back. But that's only if they have a good growth environment. So that's it, guys. So this was a perfect example of two plants that, or one, you know, two plants, one variety that had the trifecta, underwatered, overwatered, not enough humidity, and not enough sunlight. So the humidity and moisture thing is the same. So um, that's three whammies all at once. If you're finding that happening to some of your plants at home where they're crunchy, but their leaves, or some leaves are still with life and just soft, so they look like they're thirsty and dehydrated, you might have had a lot of things happening. For us here, to, like, to just kind of speculate a little bit further, I think that this ivy was left underwatered and then it got heavily watered because it was left underwatered. And then it was put into a spot where it wasn't getting enough airflow or sun. So it had all this moisture in its root ball, but it didn't know what to do with all that moisture because sunlight is will photosynthesize and the photosynthesis is all about working out and using energy. And once a plant is working out and using energy because it's photosynthesizing, it's using the water that's in the root ball. So this, this, basically this ivy ate a pizza, drank a beer, and maybe had a side of french fries and just sat on the couch. So it needs a workout. Let's go give it a workout. 
Uh, thank you for tuning in as usual. My name is Kristen. I am one of the founders of TUA. I really appreciate you watching these videos. If you have additional questions, please reach out to us at care at TULA.house. We are always happy to help. And wishing you well and hope to see you soon here at TULA. Okay, bye-bye.